Yep, exactly. Well said. Good summary to keep me from being too much of the the professor who's been teaching all day. Oh, no. (laughs) So for for those of you that don't know, uh, hopefully some point in, you know, we'll actually get our co-publication out um, on this question of identity struggle. Yeah, from the council, from the time of the, especially the council of the Second Vatican Council and some of the discussions about the... um, you know, what, I just use the expression today. What is that that expression? Yeah, the the question of ancestral tradition, or um, as Alquin uh, loved to to write in his dissertation, that was um, you know highly recommended by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, then Cardinal Ratzinger. You know, objective liturgical tradition. This this whole question of a living paradosis, a living handing on, um, which a lot of people would hear Alquin, especially with you know in twenty earlier in twenty twenty two where he went and got himself ordained apart from, you know, his bishop's permission. And I'm not here to endorse anything like that. Going back to his academic work, what's um, fascinating is that the the scholarly work that he has done on liturgical history is still worth looking at in spite of the great controversy around surrounding his ordination to the priesthood. But one, one of the things that's fascinating is, is this question of, um, the relationship between liturgical practice and the relationship between the liturgical life of a particular church as, as like the living locus and the living expression of her theology, which sums up, I, I forget, who is it, uh, Pius the Twelfth or, or Tenth, who made the comment, you know, the, the preeminent form of the ordinary magisterium of the church is her liturgy. I'm actually not sure. I would I would be more likely to see that in something like Mediator Day. So I would I would say that's in Pius the uh, Twelfth. It was actually yeah. I think it was actually an offhand comment because I, I've come across it in uh, Louis Bouillet's works and writings where he you know had this like offhand quote from. But it's it's know. very true, right? I mean, it, to the, you know, there's a whole controversy about like, is there a constitutive tradition, like a body of tradition that kind of is separate from scripture, that whole material sufficiency question. But and they that that tends to get tied up with the other idea, though, that tradition really is primarily whatever we may say about its content. It is this lived expression of the faith as received, and yeah. the liturgy is where that happens. It's, I mean, it happens with all the the nuance and suppleness of just unfolding this multi pleated garment the the that pulpit is the mystery of the faith yeah the pulpit is not the primary instrument it's the liturgical texts themselves exactly and, and as now, you said and i was thinking this earlier even in each tradition their chant tradition mm-hmm. you know think about how in our i know and i presume we have this in both the slavic texts contexts where you have tones that sort of are clearly chosen to overlap you know things from whole uh, from like um great and holy week and or funereal services, for instance, you'll have overlappings of texts. Um, you've got all kinds of like ways that certain tones, even that are sort of just overlap different feast days and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Not even the anthem part, but just like particular one-off tones that we have. Um, you really can't go in and even start plucking that stuff without just messing up like a, an element of passing on the connection of the tradition. You, you know, you have to treat it like a you yep. have to treat it like a living organism. Change happens, text can be revised, removed, mm-hmm. edited, but at the end of the day there is this great question of um ultimately, you know, substantial uh, continuity. And 